Uhuru, brothers and sisters and comrades. This is Chairman Amali Shetela. I am Chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and leader of the Uhuru Movement and the International African Revolution. I'm doing this uh, broadcast right now uh, because earlier this morning, about 5 o'clock this morning, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, the organization that killed Malcolm X, killed uh, Martin Luther King, killed Fred Hampton, killed so many uh, African people uh, who were trying to uh, win our freedom, raided my house uh, at 5 o'clock an hour later than the time that they raided the house of Fred Hampton when they murdered him uh, at 4 a.m. Uh, in Chicago, Illinois in 1969. They raided my house. They came to the house uh, and they, outside the house, we were alerted of their presence uh, by a, a loudspeaker uh, demanding that anybody in the house where we lived uh, here in St. Louis uh, come out with our hands up with nothing in our hands. And uh, they said that they were the FBI. And because I knew uh, some of the history that I just mentioned in terms of their assassination and killing of uh, African leaders uh, in the past, and because my wife was also there and who was a leader in her own right uh, in our movement, I decided that I would go down the stairs uh, uh, to greet them uh, first uh, because I, I had no idea of what they would do. At the same time they were talking uh, over the loudspeaker, uh, flash bang grenades were going off uh, throughout uh, the neighborhood. They had broken a window downstairs uh, in the basement in the house. They had broken uh, in the house next door, the apartment next door. They had smashed the door in. So the huge uh, uh, racket that was going on outside. So I walked down the stairs and when I opened the door uh, going down the stairs, a drone uh, came into the door and almost hit my wife in the face as she was, uh, as she was uh, leaving uh, the building. So uh, when I get outside, uh, what I see is that there is an armored vehicle in front of the house. Uh, there are combat clad uh, FBI agents all over the place carrying automatic weapons and what have you. They not only are in front of the house, they are occupying uh, the porch uh, and the yard of the neighbors next door. And this is a really poor uh, and economically depressed community that we live in. Uh, so the flashbang grenades are still going off. Uh, when, I, when I get outside, they, uh, they handcuff me they, uh, and they handcuff my wife and they, they wanted to have me sit on the curb uh, while they carried out their operation. They indicated to me that they had some kind of search warrant and that this search warrant uh, was related uh, to uh, an indictment that was coming down later in the day against a Russian national who was in Russia. And that uh, somehow uh, my name, uh, my wife's name, uh, was uh, attached or associated with this indictment that they were uh, going to be uh, releasing in Russia. Uh, they refused to show me a search warrant. Uh, but of course they had the guns and so they had the guns and they were able to enter and occupy my house for uh, several hours. But when they, when they had us outside, I, I finally asked them if we were free to leave because it was ridiculous what was going on. They were clearly uh, not arresting us and they were making a big show uh, in, the, in the community and people are watching uh, these uh, agents uh, in front of our house. I was later to learn uh, that uh, they had, uh, they had, first of all, they took our cell phones, they uh, entered the house, we were to learn that they took all of the devices, the computers and what have you, in the house. I was later to learn that uh, at the same time they raided our house in North St. Louis, a majority African population. They raided the African People's Solidarity Committee and Uhuru Solidarity Movement, they raided the center. Uh, the Solidarity Center that's in South St. Louis, uh, which is majority white uh, section of St. Louis, and which uh, allowed uh, our movement and our party uh, to promote the struggle for, uh, uh, against colonialism uh, and for the liberation of black people here in the United States and around the world. 
Uh, and this was uh, something that was meeting a great success in terms of the numbers of white people who are colonizers, who are saying that they support uh, the struggle of African people against uh, colonialism. This was the headquarters of much of the movement that we have uh, having reparations coming to uh, the African community in the form of the programs that we are involved in here in St. Louis. Uh, at the same time this was going on, they raided the Uhuru House, our, our office, uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, they used uh, the battering rams, they, they knocked uh, in the door. Uh, they raided the radio station that we have uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, Black Power 96. Uh, uh, 0.3 uh, FM. Uh, they also uh, uh, went to the home uh, or the residence of the uh, person, the young woman who is the leader of our organization that's responsible for uh, much of the agitation and propaganda, our information uh, institutions, instruments, organization, our radio station, our newspaper, the Burning Spear. They went and knocked on her door. They told her the lie that her car uh, was being broken into and that she needed to come outside and she, they used that as the means of tricking her outside of the house so that they could uh, uh, also take, steal her, uh, 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 her cell phone and, and what have you and detain her uh, uh, momentarily for a while there. Uh, this is part of what happened. They attacked the house of uh, the uh, leader of the Solidarity Movement uh, here in St. Louis. They went, they used uh, battering rams, knocked the doors down uh, in their houses. Uh, they held them uh, under arrest. Of, uh, they didn't say it was arrest, but they detained them uh, with the power of the gun uh, for a considerable amount of time. So uh, they handcuffed uh, 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 them uh, in the, in the uh, Solidarity Center. This is what happened this morning. Now, I want it to be clear that uh, the, the United States government, according to what I've come to learn since that time, uh, I have since that time seen uh, uh, the search warrant. I have heard news accounts and seen news accounts uh, that they were involved in some attack on our movement because they considered us some agent of Russia, that somehow the Russians uh, uh, that we uh, ha we did know uh, uh, were involved in in using us using me uh, as uh, some kind of instrument of Russian foreign policy uh, that we were interfering the Russians using us were interfering in U.S. elections they indicated that the election campaign in 1917 and 1919 that saw uh, comrades uh, Jesse Neville and comrade. Uh, Achille and I participate in a reparations uh, on uh, agenda for the first time in the history of this country in an election. The reparations issue was raised. Uh, it became so significant that it forced uh, the uh, presidential candidates uh, in 1919, uh, I think it was, at, uh, uh, 19, uh, 2000 rather, uh, to, uh, to, to, put, to put reparations uh, forward as a part of their campaign. They saw uh, the significance of our movement. And uh, so Jesse Neville, who uh, we ran for mayor uh, uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, and Achille Anai, who ran uh, for city council uh, in St. Petersburg, Florida, in elections that for the first time in his uh, uh, history, uh, uh, Barack Hussein Obama uh, intervened because they were so terrified, so afraid, of the reparations demand being taken to the community. We're talking about an election that saw Achille and I uh, lead a, a march uh, with scores of white people marching downtown St. Petersburg, Florida, where only 20% of the population is African, and they were all uniting with reparations to black people, and they were chanting that, and they were chanting anti-colonial slogans. So this is, this is part of what happened, and they want to tie the Russians to this. They're saying that somehow uh, the Russians are using the African People's Socialist Party and the Uhuru movement uh, to bring disregard uh, to their democratic institutions and that's why they attack our house, which is ridiculous uh, in its face for a number of reasons. Number one, if they were interested in dealing with anybody that was giving a bad taste uh, uh, to anybody in the world about U.S. elections, 
then they would have had to deal first of all uh, with the fact that, uh, that a, a, a group, a mob of white people uh, uh, apparently supported by the majority of white people in this country, given money by huge corporations uh, who exist in this country, tried to overthrow the government on January 6th. Yes. Not a single flashbang bomb was used. It wasn't the Russians did that. That was white people. You didn't see these people who said they were following Trump. On January 6th, you didn't see Trump having to face uh, uh, drones in his house, uh, flashbang grenades, or anything like that. It's just a, an absolute um, a nefarious uh, lie that they are constructed uh, as a part of a, a propaganda war that they engaged in against Russia and against black people uh, in this country and around the world. So this charge that somehow we were interfering through Russia, Russia was interfering through us uh, against uh, uh, honest and noble elections in the United States government where they used to kill us for even trying to register to vote where some of the most significant leaders of black people came to uh, be known by the world because they had they faced police dogs bombings and stuff like that in order to vote and somehow the noble U.S. government uh, is attacked, Russia is attacking this noble U.S. government in its electoral process through the African People's Socialist Party. It is the most ridiculous charge, the most ridiculous claim, and they are not saying this because they believe many people, of majority, certainly of African people will believe that it is a part of a, of a serious kind of war, ideological war, uh, that they're waging against black people here and that they're waging against Russia. And, you know, at the same time they're doing this, they uh, look, we have to look at this case of this uh, young woman, uh, Griner, I think her name is, uh, who has been detained in Russia, who confessed to bringing in to Russia uh, 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 controlled uh, substances, uh, 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 marijuana or something uh, to that effect. And the U.S. is so concerned uh, that they're trying to use this detention of this woman who confessed to having done it uh, as an example how Russia is, a, is opposed to black people. And they're doing this in part because nobody, uh, they haven't got a single African country, even neo-colonial sycophants, to unite with the United States and the United Nations in terms of how they are targeting Russia uh, in this Ukraine-Russia question. And if they talk about misusing, and, and so now they're using this woman uh, to try to discredit Russia in this way. And they now want to say, uh, and that's despite the fact that in the United States there are hundreds and thousands of black people who are locked up in prisons right now uh, because of marijuana use. Uh, and so this is just a bogus charge, and they know you know it, they know I know this, but there's somebody out there that they hope to be able to convince, and whether they convince them or not, they're creating a narrative they think they, they can get away with because they can control the narrative and we don't have any other outlet to express our views on anything. So we're expressing our views right now, and I think that you should be aware of what's happening. But more than that, it's really important for you to know the role, uh, the advanced uh, detachment, the, the uh, revolutionary role, the vanguard role of the African People's Socialist Party. They're saying somehow the Russians are responsible for our position. They say this man, uh, Alexander Ionov, uh, who I met uh, in Russia, I went to Russia on two different occasions, and I met him at a conference of nations that was involved in the question for self-determination. Black people, African people need to be self-determining, self-governing people in the United States and around the world. They want to keep us fighting against racism and the ideas in the heads of white people. They want to keep us make, fighting to make white people like us as opposed to fighting for our own power. The African People's Socialist Party was founded uh, something like 50 years ago in May. And for the purpose of continuing the struggle for black, by black people and oppressed peoples around the world against colonialism. They tried to destroy the memory of the people that what we are fighting for uh, is, a, is against colonialism. And so but, uh, the African People's Socialist Party, by ourselves, 
uh, mostly for 50 years, have been pursuing this struggle against colonialism and uniting with all the peoples around the world. So they said, uh, I went to Russia. But white people go to occupy Palestine that they call Israel every day of the week. And they work with other white people to steal the land, kill the people, Arab Palestinian people there. They don't say anything about that. And guess what? It's not just the Russians that we support in Ukraine. We support the Palestinian Arabs in occupied Palestine that they call Israel. We support the people who are in Nicaragua who uh, have made their own revolution against U.S. puppets there. We support uh, people uh, who are fighting against oppression everywhere, and we support uh, the, 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 the Russians in this war that's being made against Russia through Ukraine uh, in an instance when the United States government overthrew the elected government of Ukraine in 2014, and since that time have killed 13 to 14,000 Russians or, or, or Ukrainians in eastern uh, Ukraine who support uh, Russia. Russia. So this bogus thing that they're saying is uh, requires of people ignorance of by, by people around the world of this history. And uh, they, it requires ignorance of the people around the world uh, of, of the role that the United States has played. They want us to forget that it was the United States government that overthrew the elected government of Iran in 1953. They want us to forget it was the United States government that overthrew the government in, 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 uh, uh, of Abenz in Guatemala uh, in 1954. They want us to forget that it was the United States government that organized a coup attempt uh, 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 against Hugo Chavez uh, 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 some years ago. Uh, they want us to forget the United States government that tried over and over and over again to assassinate Fidel Castro. These are people who were in power in their own governments where they had disagreements with U.S. foreign policy because U.S. foreign, US foreign policy was designed uh, to keep them living under colonial domination. And black people here, they for, think we forgot they killed Malcolm that they killed Martin Luther King, that they had killed Lumumba, that they overthrew Nkrumah, uh, that they killed uh, Sankara, uh, that they've done all this mayhem around the world. And in 1968 alone, uh, they killed something like 30 members of the Black Panther Party. And in 1969, they murdered Fred Hampton. These, these, they weren't, con the Russians didn't do that. The U.S. government did that. And guess what? They want to say that we are taking money from the Russians. They said the Russians supported some campaign that we did uh, to get people to support uh, black people uh, in, at the United Nations who were exposing the fact that genocide, according to U.S. conventions, United Nations Convention, is being committed against black people. And they say that this was the idea of the Russians. The Russians paid us to do this. And guess what? That thing that we put uh, up uh, on, 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 on social media, on the internet, has got more than 100,000 uh, 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 supporters around the world because everybody knows what the United States government has done to black people and they think they can terrorize us into silence. They know that the African People's Socialist Party, just in St. Louis alone, not to count what we've done in Philadelphia in terms of economic projects there for the African community, that in terms of the Uhuru furnishes there, not, not to mention even the, the markets that we created there, the One Africa, One Nation market to get money circulating in the African community and what they like to refer to as food deserts, which are nothing but power deserts, that, that we support up to a hundred or more vendors that come out to feed their families. and uh, uh, They don't mention that, but that's what the Uhuru movement has done. Uh, with the Uhuru movement in St. Louis alone, in just five short years, we have transformed North St. Louis that they have actually created a plan in 1972 that's designed to starve black people out of St. Louis. They engage in a process now to make St. Louis a majority white city. And the work that the Uhuru movement done, has done in terms of creating institutions, rehabilitating the community in so many ways is uplifting the entire community. We've created economic institutions. We've got a program that's happening today uh, and tomorrow. Uh, but for African doulas, they tore down the hospital for black people so that we don't even have a hospital. So African women in St. Louis, like most places around the world, do not have access uh, to uh, 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 easy uh, 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 birth uh, facility, birthing facilities. We changed that. We took that on. And even as recently as today and tomorrow, we have programs where African women are learning to be doulas and so can go out in the world and train other African women 
so that we can have a burgling situation that's uh, favorable to African people. We've created a, a, a situation, a program, uh, that where we are training uh, African people who get out of prison. They can come and participate in the Wuru uh, Bakery Cafe that we have taken a huge uh, empty building, bought the building, so that we can create a Wuru Bakery Cafe there for economic development for our community. That, that would cater to African men and women who are in prisons, they can come out into a workforce, an African international workforce program, and learn uh, culinary skills, and learn how to run restaurants and things like that, and provide jobs for the people in our own community, our job, not owned by any individual, not privately owned uh, by white power, but contends with the economic forces that penetrate our community and suck the life, suck the blood out, they hate us for that. They're opposed to us because of that and all of the other institutions that we've created. So this makes us a threat. They see in the African People's Socialist Party a vanguard for the struggle for the liberation of our people. They see that because not just what we do here in the United States, but because we had the temerity to do like Garvey, to do like Malcolm X, and take the struggle of black people around the world. Because right now, as we have this discussion, there are discussions being led, lives being done in South Africa, in, in Sierra Leone, in West Africa, talking about what the government has done and is doing right now to crush this movement and the schemes and lies that they are telling in order to justify it to a public uh, that might be susceptible to uh, anything that they say negative about black people and black power. So this is something that I wanted you to be aware of. Uh, because uh, I just heard uh, within the last hour or so uh, that U.S. Uh, President uh, Joe Biden, uh, Joe Biden from Delaware, uh, Joe Biden who put 100,000 policemen in the streets of this country killing black people all around the country. It was not Russians who killed Mike Brown. It was not Russians who killed Tamir Rice. It was not Russians who have been doing all of these offenses against us. The U.S. government did that. And so they want to make us instruments of the Russians because we complain about it. But black people have been complaining about our treatment forever. And you can go back for 50 years and you will not find a single change in the politic and the position of the African People's Socialist Party regarding our relationship uh, to the United States. Uh, uh, you will not find that from 50 years ago. Now suddenly we are supposed to become uh, tools of Russia like black people don't have minds of our own to be able to define what our reality is and who's responsible for it. They killed Malcolm, they, over, they, they, they got rid of Garvey, they put him in prison, they killed Lumumba, they killed Nkrumah, they, they killed Martin Luther King and what have you, and then in, the, in this desert that they create of leadership, they make an assumption that they can tell black people anything and that we don't have the ability to respond, but we do. And that's something that everybody should be clear of and you should be clear of. Uh, because the African People's Social Party has been working for 50 years. We've created institutions, organizations, committees that span the globe and inside the United States. We've taken on every contradiction that we are afflicted with as a people. Ideological, what is the philosophy? What do you believe in? We've, we've created a philosophy that speaks to what happens to African people and to peoples of the world. And that's something that has been providing leadership not only for black people in this country, but other oppressed peoples around the world. That's a problem that they have uh, as well with the African People's Socialist Party. We created the African National Women's Organization. We created the doulas that's going to be dealing with this country. We created the International People's Democratic World Movement to fight against against the assault on so-called democracy of black people here. We are the ones who are connected with the created the African Socialist International. So the struggle of African people is not something they've been able to confine uh, to black people in the United States, but they, they've connected it around the world so that black people recognize in Haiti who they are killing even as we have this discussion. Uh, black people recognize the relation, black people in Jamaica, black people in, throughout the Caribbean, uh, throughout Africa, and various other places around the world, including Europe and the United States. That's who we provide leadership for. That's what the United States government is fighting against. That's what they fear, even in the face of everybody being able to see an obvious decline of white power and the United States government as the chief hegemon of white power in the world.
That's what we are contending with. And I wanted you to know that and to have some access to a different narrative than, than what is being imposed on people by the United States government and by the U.S.-led uh, media who gets his news and information from handouts from U.S. government uh, institutions, the FBI, uh, the just so-called Justice Department, and what have you. There is a story, and you should know it. And if the U.S. government said it, oh, most black people are suspicious anyway. The United States government has been unsuccessful in convincing a single African country that participates in the United Nations with unity with the United States against, against Russia. And I'm, I'm reminded of the statement made a long time ago about Muhammad Ali when he said, ain't no Vietnamese ever called me nigger when the United States was murdering people in Vietnam and had African people fighting to murder people in Vietnam and to be killed in Vietnam for the United States. And the truth of the fact is that somebody said today earlier, you can't find an African in this country or most of the world with a, with a Russian last name. We got the last names of slave masters and colonizers uh, everywhere you see us. The Russians did not enslave us. Ain't no Russian killed Mike Brown. Ain't no Russian killed Lumumba. Ain't no Russian overthrew Nkrumah. Ain't no Russian been responsible for what we face every day in our lives for the gentrification that we are faced with. And they're going to say the Russians somehow had to tell us that we were being oppressed, that some white guy or some Russian guy is the one who is the mastermind. That's a statement about the, they telling the world that black people don't have enough sense to be able to lead our own struggle. But that's not true because black people, African people for the first time in history have our own revolutionary working class party that has created a philosophy that functions as the advanced attachment, as the vanguard for the struggle to free our people. And we're going to free our people and we are not going to retreat because of what the FBI has done is doing and because of the threat that they are posing against us. We're not retreating, we're building. And uh, that's what uh, everybody should understand, that this is the African People's Socialist Party that you're dealing with, not somebody that trembles uh, at every move that the U.S. government makes. And most of the people around the world have come to that conclusion, too. Nobody's trembling anymore, Uncle Sam. And the fact is, you say we're getting money from Russia. The truth is, Russia doesn't owe us reparations. You owe us reparations, Uncle Sam. <laughs> Uh, and, 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 and white people in this country owe us reparations. And I want to say further than that because part of what they're trying to do is to isolate the black liberation movement, isolate the African people's social struggle, isolate the Uhuru movement. And the fact is that all of these economic institutions that I'm talking about that exist under our leadership today, most of them were funded in part by reparations voluntarily given to us by white people. And this is the problem for the United States government where white people will voluntarily unite do a self-criticism and engage for the first time in their history in genuine class struggle uh, by uniting with the struggle against colonialism. That's where the money is coming from, Uncle Sam. And you want to frighten white people so they don't pay this reparation. You want to slander us so that white people won't pay this reparation because that's our money that they're giving us, not their money. And the fact is that our money is now being able to use, be used to create doula programs for African women, we create a basketball court. Uh, for our young African uh, people in our communities, that's who we are. And we ain't backing down this because you come with flashbang grenades and whatever, and we know that you have guns, and we know what you're capable of doing in terms of murdering and killing and jailing people. We know that already, and so that can no longer be something that's used against us. It's happened too many times before, and we're ready for that. We're going to win. We're going to struggle. Uh, in fact, we are winning, and that's why the United States government is moving against us in the fashion that it's doing. So I wanted to say that, and I don't know... Did we get any, uh, is there anything that we need to be responding to in terms of, of comments or uh, et cetera? I wanted to make this point. Uh, um, here's some people tuning in from. Like so I see that people are tuning in from New Jersey, Jamaica, Augusta, Georgia, Washington, D.C., uh, Collegeville, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Philadelphia, San Diego, New Orleans, and Ecuador. And Belfast. Uh, and Belfast. Belfast. Uh, <laughs> And then we support the Irish too. So I went to Ireland. I was in North Ireland, Northern Ireland when the British were dominating with, with the police troops in the streets, similar to what we just experienced last night, uh, early this morning here. And he, somebody made a comment that um, 
that, okay, so now is the U.S. going to put Russians living in this country in the concentration camps like they did the Japanese? So the question was asked if the Russians, if the United States is going to put Russians in concentration camps in this country like they did the Japanese uh, during the Second Imperialist World War. Uh, uh, the fact of the matter, of course, is all of this is contrived. It's all contrived. It's all uh, something that they put together. They engaged uh, in a desperate uh, uh, last gasp uh, struggle uh, for a dying empire, and everybody in the world can see it's dying, and they see Russia as a part of the death threat. They see China as a part of the death threat, and they see the struggle for black power as something as a part of the death threat of U.S. colonial power and that's why they're attacking us and, con and connecting us uh, with Russia and I'm waiting to hear them connect us with China as well because uh, the fact is that anybody uh, who is not going to toe the line, anybody who's not going to follow Joe Biden and that other, what's her name, Kamala uh, Harris and, uh, uh, and, and Trump. Um, and we are also aware, as you must be uh, comrades and brothers and sisters, the polling coming from the United States media sources are saying that the majority of what they call voters in the United States feel like, said, uh, that the system in the United States should be overthrown. Not the Russians. This is the majority of people. They said it crosses all ideological planes. You're in trouble. The United States is in trouble, and they, they want to say we are the reason for that. I'm proud to, that they can blame that on us because we are the vanguard, we are the advanced attachment, we intend to destroy colonial domination of black people and the peoples of the world. We, are, we accept that responsibility and we accept that designation of being the reason that you are dying uh, because black power will kill you. It would kill colonialism and it would liberate the peoples of the world and the majority of the people of the world are not white and they are not colonizers, and you want to act like that's not true, and you build this little silo of news expression where the only thing that people can hear is what you got to say. That's why we're doing this right now, so that everybody here can be able to say what really happened and what's really at stake uh, in this struggle and not be f afraid. Do not be afraid. Uh, uh, do not despair, uh, because history is on our side, and what we see is the collapse of this dying empire, and that's something that's frightening the hell out of them. Uh, uh, and, and January 6th is what they should be concerned about. That is the ones who control power right now. But there are no flash bombs going off that I've heard about attacking anybody who uh, tried to overthrow the government, overthrow the vote in this country. White people did that. Yes. Not, not the Russians, not the African People's Socialist Party. White people did that, and, and that's something that you need to deal with. And you also need to deal with the fact that we've created an African people's solidarity movement, an Uhuru solidarity movement, where there are in 130 cities or so white people who are actively engaged in working for reparations for black people. In 30 states, white people are actively engaged in working for reparations of black people, so you don't have the same ability to isolate black people isolate the African Revolution as you've been able to do in the past, and we are intending to win, to lead the revolutionary struggle uh, that has to happen to bring in a new world where people can be free, where there's not a world of, of slaves and slave masters and bosses and workers where the people can be free, where nobody lives at the expense of anybody else, where black people will have black power over our own lives, and every thinking human being should be able to unite with the struggle for black power because it is white power that has brought us to the place where we are today. It is white power that emerged with the emergence of capitalism itself. So join the African People's Socialist Party. Join the Uhuru movement. You have nothing to fear because this dying, this monster is acting in, in severe desperations today when it attacks us. We ain't running. We ain't retreating. We are building Uhuru.